Hey everybody, welcome to another video in my Intro to HTML series. This video I'm going to focus on something called the Fig and Fig Caption, or Figure and Fig Caption. Figure and Fig Caption are kind of like a picture box with a caption. You see them all over on the internet. This is sort of a pre-made one that allows you to um, define an area that's going to hold a picture, a box that's going to hold a picture, and put a caption that's going to float below it. The purpose of the figure is to wrap up any kind of content that's related to the content that it's near. In other words, if I put a uh, figure and fig caption here, this is in an article that's about lists and tables. I might try and find an image that is um, that, is, that would illustrate the idea of lists and tables. So I'd put an image in here. And then I'd put the fig caption below it. OK? What I might do now is I might go and find an image that I can just place in there. Um, let's see. HTML lists. Go to images and see if I can find one. OK, here's a, an HTML list right here. View image. I will say I'm just going to do this. I'm going to copy the URL, paste my URL right there, save it, look at it in the browser. Yikes, this is an ugly looking web page. But there's my image with my in my figure with the fig caption below it. All right, let's modify this HTML a bit. I'm going to take out a lot of the style and then I'm going to talk about what HTML this actually is. Um, so we did a whole bunch of stuff on this. I put a bunch of borders in here. I'm going to get rid of some of these borders, get rid of all these widths, all the box model stuff. You might recall this document from a video where I was talking about the box model. I edited this and I added background colors to everything and I, you know, I uh, put borders on stuff and I adjusted the widths and heights and we explored the box model. There we go. This is just a little bit cleaner now. I'm going to take my figure and fig caption and I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm just going to leave it there. That's where I'll keep it. Okay? Now, this figure and fig caption is totally unstyled. The figure by default is going to stretch from edge of page to edge of page just like that. It doesn't have a defined width, so it takes up the whole available width. It's not going to have any special style to it. There's no background color, there's no margin or padding put in it. It's just going to have my image here with my caption underneath it. What I'm going to do to start is I'm going to give the figure itself a background color so that we can actually see it. Figure. background color, sky blue. You see me using that color a lot, I'm sure. And there you see it. You see that my figure goes from edge to edge. It takes up as much available space as possible. All right? But my image itself um, is just sitting there floating all the way over at the left edge. It's touching the edge of the box. The caption is floating all the way over at the left, and it's touching the, the left edge of the box and the bottom of the box. I don't like this. I want to change this a little bit. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set the width of my figure, and I want my figure to take up 25% um, usable width. Okay? And from a previous video, we saw that. 25% set to width, save it, and refresh it. All right, that's great. That's about how wide I want it to be. But still, I have problems. 
I don't like where the image is sitting. I want it to have a little bit of white space around it. I want a little bit of padding around my figure. Or I mean around my, uh, around my image, around my caption. So what I can do is I can add padding to the figure. I'll see what 1% looks like. Nah, I'll see what 2% looks like. See if that's good. Save it. Refresh it. That's kind of nice. I've got some even padding around the edges here, around my caption, around my image. That separates that white image from the white background, so now it looks like that image is actually floating inside of the, the figure. Now the only problem is that my image is not wide enough to really sit in the center of the, um, of the figure. A couple things I can do. One, I can shrink the figure down. Two, I can make the image bigger. Three, I can kind of do both. I might opt for option three. I'm going to start by making the figure a little bit smaller. I'm going to make it 20% width. There we go. Now it's shrunk down. This seems like a, a, a more reasonable size in comparison to the image. But now I'm going to grow the image up. What I'm going to do with the image is I'm going to set the image to be 100% the usable space, 100% the usable space of the width of that figure. Now we talked about descendant selection before. When we were talking about nesting lists and making an outline, we did something like this. We selected the, the thing that's nested inside of something else. So what I have here for my HTML structure is I've got an image which is nested inside of a figure. So when I select this, what I'm probably going to do is go image, or pardon me, figure, image. That's saying that I'm selecting all images that exist inside of figures. And I'm going to set the width of this to 100%. What that's going to do is it's going to make sure that the image that exists in a figure is always going to take up 100% of usable space in its container. Bing! It just made that image bigger. And now it sits really nicely within that padding of my figure. All right? Now here are some of the things that I see happening a lot. Um, people have very large images. Let's say um, that the image is much bigger. I'm going to find an image that's larger and this one's quite large. View image. I'm going to copy my URL. Paste it into the markup. Save it. Refresh it in the browser. And you see, well, you see that my image has shrunk down. But if I don't set the width on that image, this is something that people do a lot, is they'll just throw a image inside of a figure and they don't set the width of the image. Well, the image is huge, the figure is small. So the height of the figure is always going to stretch the height of the image, but the width, I've constrained the width of the image to be 25% of the usable space of its container. So that's 25% the usable space of the article. That's pretty small. Well, the image is a lot bigger than 25% um, the usable space. So what it's doing is it's breaking out of its container. If this ever happens to you, it's probably because you didn't appropriately set the width of the image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throttle the width of that image by going figure image width 100%. This is going to make it a fluid image. What I mean by a fluid image is it's going to grow and shrink with the size of that figure. It's always going to take up 100% usable space in the figure. So in this case, it'll shrink down to fit nicely in there. Well, the image is not very readable. So since it's not very readable, I might make my figure larger. Watch what happens when I make my fig figure larger. 80%. The image grows along with the figure. Pretty neat. So it's a flexible image. It's going to grow and shrink with the size of its container. The way we do that 
is we style the figure and give it a width, and then we style the image that exists in the figure and set the width to 100%. Let's go back and look at the HTML really quickly. Creating a figure is pretty simple. You start with the figure tag. Figure opens and figure closes. And usually you're going to put images in figures. You can put all kinds of stuff in figures. You could put um, videos in figures. You could put links to SoundCloud in, in figures. You could put anything into figures, okay? Uh, but it's always got to be content that's related to the content that it's associated with. So in this case, the figure is going to go inside of this article that's about lists and tables. So the image is about lists and tables. The caption will go below the image, and you'll put some text in there. You can put a paragraph around the text in the fig caption. That's totally acceptable. Um, you don't have to necessarily, but you can do that. You can style that text in the caption however you want. So for example, I... Um, want to style the caption, I would just select fig caption. Maybe I want to give it a different color. Navy. Save it. Refresh it. And now it's changed to navy. Alright, so that's the basics of using a figure in fig caption. Once again, the figure is just going to be like a container that you will use to contain things that are going to be related to the content that they are surrounded by. So in this case, I got a list image to go along with this article about lists and tables. Alright, thanks for watching.